Ladies and gentlemen, man, oh man, if we are going to get shows like we did tonight for the rest of 2021, uh, we are in for one fun ride with AEW. This is your AEW Road Rager review on Wednesday, July 7th. 2021 i am joseph conlin here with you already know you already know man he is on the screen wesley williams man you guys see it in the title how good does it feel to have a packed house for aew shows again they were loud man they were excited unbelievable i loved the show tonight the, the crowds in AEW, they are the secret weapon, man. I'm tell, I've am i been saying this for months. The loud crowd energy for AEW is their secret weapon, no question for me. So, man, it's been a week. How are you doing? And uh, after that show tonight, uh, I'm doing mighty fine. I am doing <laughs> mighty fine, man. Oh, oh man, AEW with a live full crowd of fans man it's just so beautiful it's so beautiful we have not seen this and lord knows how long on on a weekly basis we're, we're back the welcome back tour is commenced road rager is all said and done and man we got so much to talk about and man just what a show all around man aw knows how to bring it when they when they bring you a show they just know how to bring it to you in the best way possible each and every single wednesday night man Tonight was no different. We got Fighter Fest night one and night two in the next couple weeks, and then got Fight for the Fall to end off what should be a fantastic month of pro wrestling for the month of July, man. I mean, th this was just a great, great way to kick us off. So much to talk about, man. I'm ready to talk about it. It's going to be such a great review. What a great show tonight. <laughs> yeah, man. Tony Khan said on Busted Open today that he's got a bunch of surprises. He's been saying it for a while, too. He's got a bunch of surprises up his sleeve, man. Man, we saw we saw a surprise tonight. Uh, well, I, I don't. We don't want to get into it yet. We're not going to mention the name. But were you shocked? Like I was shocked. I like yeah. got up from my seat. I was like, holy shit! <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Uh, probably my favorite moment of the whole night was right there. But we're gonna we're gonna have to build it up, man. We gotta wait. We just gotta wait a little, a little bit. But we're gonna build that up, man, because we got a lot to talk about with that big talent that showed up on AEW television tonight, man. What a way to kick us off on the road again. Yeah, absolutely, man. But, ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for joining us tonight here on the Big Five Field channel. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Most uh, most importantly, be sure you are subscribed. Let's try to get the 420 by the end of the week. Have Got to get that subscribers up. The views are doing good. We got to get the subscribers up, though. But if you haven't already... Uh, be sure to go ahead and check my reviews for Monday Night Raw this past Monday, which, on a, on a quick note, uh, I'll probably talk about it on Friday because it's a big deal, but Monday Night Raw got their lowest rating of all time, 1.47 million, man. Puts a smile on my face, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, uh, 1.47. Yeah, I had a little bit of something to say about that on Twitter myself. A very, very brief little statement, but... Uh... You know what? Uh, they deserve it. You know, they, they want to give fans the crappiest product imaginable. And this is the result of it. And if this is going to continue to be the case, I hope they drop lower. But, man, meanwhile, you know, you're looking at AEW, man, and, and they already are drawing close to a million with last week's rating. Man, I can't wait to see tomorrow when Brian Alvarez tweets out the rating for AEW, man. I, I imagine it has to be just a little bit higher at least. But, man, I'm telling you, sooner rather than later, those, those ratings are probably going to surpass Monday Night Raw, man. And when, and when that does eventually happen, because you know it's going to happen, I'm going to be laughing <laughs> so... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be shouting to, to, the, to the cows come home, man. It is going to be such a beautiful sight. But yeah, yeah, Raw drew their lowest rating. Another record low in Monday Night Raw history. And well-deserved because, you know, like I said, they give you the crappiest product imaginable <laughs> in pro wrestling. They're, I wouldn't even consider that, that abomination of a show a pro wrestling show, because it's not. It's not. It's a circus act, and they deserve that rating, and I hope it dips lower. So. Absolutely. And then go ahead and check out last night's NXT Great American Bash review on the channel. Go ahead and check that out. 
Man, let's talk Road Rager. This show was amazing, I thought, tonight, man. What a show. We kicked it off with Cody Rhodes versus QT Marshall in a strap match. Uh, I don't know if I would have kicked off the show with this match, meaning that I didn't really see a lot of people care about it. Um, but it turned out to be a really fun strap match, actually. Uh, really not that bad. QT Marshall got a jobber's entrance, <laughs> so you can already tell where this was going. Um, the crowd was into it at the end. They were trying to get into it at the beginning, uh, but they did not. But they got into it at the end. Uh, early in the match, the lights went out. And I was like, I was texting one of my group chats. I'm like, there's a storm going on in, in Florida right now. So that's probably the reason why. And man, we, I got worked. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that later on. But I got worked. Um, but the match, the match was fine. It was very good. It was fun. Um, QT Marshall took the L. And uh, the Factory, their first big feud in AEW against the Nightmare family, they took the L as well. And I'm hoping, I think this is the end. Uh, thank God. Um, where where QT Marshall and his faction go, uh, I honestly, <laughs> I don't know. But uh, this was a very good strap match. The crowd was very behind Cody Rhodes. As much heat as he gets on social media and how much... I feel like he gets he he gets unnecessary heat uh, hate for a bunch of reasons. I'm not gonna go into it why, but um, man, he he's still over. He's really over, and people love him, man. And I love him too. And he got the win over QT. Very happy, celebrating with Dustin, and it was very good, very good strap match. I wouldn't have opened up the show with it, but at the end of the day, it was good. So. What'd you think about it? The floor is yours. Wes Lee Williams. Uh, yeah, I thought this was a good match. Um, yeah, like you said, Joseph, I don't know if I really would have opened up with this match. I was kind of, I was really surprised they really they actually did open it up with it. I thought if they were going to open up with any match, I thought it was going to be Andrade and Seidel. I thought that would have been a nice little open to uh, to the fans being back. But uh, I, I guess with Cody kicking off the uh, very first pandemic show, I guess it, in a way it kind of made sense for him to open the show back with fans in a way. So in a way it kind of makes sense. But uh, yeah, uh, I think as soon as we saw the, the show uh, open up, uh, once we saw QT already in the ring, we were like, uh, -huh, this is how it's going to, okay. We, we already know where this is going. So uh, yeah, man, I, I don't know. The factory, uh, they've really been, no favors have really been done for them uh, as far as the faction goes. I, I think they're probably like, they're looking very – they're kind of really low on the totem pole now as far as factions go in AEW. Uh, but this is a good strap match. Uh, you know, the crowd the crowd got uh, behind Cody a lot here. Uh, and, yeah, thankfully, uh, I think it's uh, looking like this is the end of this uh, boring feud because, uh, as we would see later in the show, it looks like Cody's got a, a new feud brewing, but we're going to get into that in just a little bit. But, yeah, thank the Lord this feud seems to be finally be over. I, I'm just – I'm so ready to move past this because I, I think everybody is – Everybody just doesn't have interest in this. And, like, I, I just – at first I had interest in it, and then, like, it quickly died off. But, uh, like I said, though, match was good. Nothing to really complain about there. But, uh, but yeah, we, we pretty much knew who was winning this. And I, I'd say it was probably the right call anyway just to have Cody win. So Yeah, listen, the feud didn't suck. I didn't, I thought, I didn't think the feud sucked. But it was pretty uninteresting seeing that who was in the uh, – the group and you could tell like where's like are, are they really gonna push QT Marshall as a singles guy? I don't I, I didn't Probably think not. so. I didn't think so from the get go. Are they gonna push a Aaron Solo and, and I would like to see them push Nick Camarado and Gogo -Go when he comes back. I don't know where the faction goes though. And quite frankly, I don't want to sound like a like a dick. I don't I don't really care in my opinion. I don't I don't really care where they go. But um Fun strap match. Most of the time, I would criticize Cody getting big win in the match, but I think this time it was the right call because if the heel won, would, would the feud, would the feud continue if, if QT won? Probably, yeah. I, I, that was what I was thinking too. I was like, Cody winning here, I think would signify like this is it. Uh, I, I don't see what they would what else they would do beyond that. So, yeah. 
But luckily, Cody won. Let's get into something else. We had Kenny Omega in the ring with Tony Schiavone with Don Callis. Don Callis got some great heat in this in this segment. He he got a uh, you got fired chant because he got fired from Impact Wrestling. Man, AEW's fan base really does watch Impact Wrestling. Maybe I gotta hop over to Access on Thursday nights. I don't know, but uh, Don Callis got a "You Got Fired" chant, and he's like, "Real men get fired." I thought that was funny. Real men get fired. Uh, not real men. They quit. So, good line by Don Callis right there. Um. He then says, there's no one left in the AEW locker room. The crowd is massively chanting cowboy shit and hangman, hangman, hangman. And then out came the Dark Order who got a big pop. Evil Uno marched right into the ring and got in Kenny Omega's face. And he said, you are ignoring the number one person. In the rankings, you are ignoring my friend. And then Kenny asked him a question. And Kenny then gave Evil Uno a low blow, which started a brawl with the Dark Order and uh, Omega, the Good Brothers, uh, Michael Nakazawa. I think Cutler was out there. So they were brawling with the Dark Order. Then the Hangman Page music came out, and the massive pop he got was freaking overwhelming, man. It was unbelievable. Uh, A lot of people were were nervous that Hangman Page wasn't going to be as over as he was before the pandemic. I'm like, man, that's just... That's such a stupid take that you just say that. Like, Like, what makes you think that? Like, I don't know, but... That man is, man, he is one of the most over baby faces in the world right now. And um, he comes out, he ta- he cleans out Michael Nakazawa, he takes out both the good brothers. Then he goes and gets in Kenny Omega's face. This segment was great, dude. The crowd was, the crowd made it even better with the, with the cowboy shit and hangman chants. Man... When this man, when this guy wins the world championship, I hope it all out. I I can't imagine the pop that he's gonna get when he wins the title. Now, they, Kenny Omega did mention that he has no challengers for a uh, fight for the fallen. Are they gonna do Hangman and Kenny Omega at fight for the fallen? I don't think that's a good decision to be, to be truthfully honest with you folks. So, who they're gonna go with at fight for the fallen? I don't know. To be truthfully honest with you, hey, maybe. I don't know. When was the last time we've seen John Silver wrestle? Uh, it was uh, against Darby Allen for the TNT title when he separated his shoulder. I would not be shocked if it's John Silver. I would not be shocked if it's Evil Uno. But besides one of those guys, I don't know who could possibly face Omega on the 28th. But this was a great segment, and that's the more important thing. And the more important thing is Hangman Page building him up versus Kenny Omega and the crowd is already into this, man. You got to love it. You have got to love it. Absolutely, yeah. Um, this was the first of many great segments tonight, I man. We had a lot of great promo segments on, on AW Dynamite tonight. This was just the first of many. But, uh, yeah, man. Yeah, and then there, there, I heard there were a few people in, on uh, in the internet wrestling community talking about how Hangman's not being booked properly. And I don't know how in the world. You, 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 you cannot be an avid watcher of Dynamite if you actually think with that mindset. Because if you if you watch the show on a weekly basis like uh, like us two do, we you can tell that Hangman Page is one of the best built characters, not only in AEW, but just in pro wrestling in general. And Hangman versus Omega is, is bound to happen, man. The face-off between these two guys was a thing of beauty. The pop he received from my I think that goes to show you right there that I, I think Hangman's being booked pretty well right now in AEW, just judging by that pop. From the Miami crowd tonight, but uh, but yet yeah, Omega currently has no challenger for fight for the fallen. It, it should not be Page at all. That's way, way too soon, way too soon to pull the trigger on it. All out main event. That's where you want to have Hangman versus Omega for the world title. That's where you pull the trigger, not fight for the fallen. Uh, Joseph, you brought up, you know, it could be a member of the Dark Order at fight for the fallen. I could see that. 
I could see maybe one of them stepping up, you know, and saying like, hey, you know, before you can do it, you know, let, let one of us take the world title back home or back over to uh, the, the Dark Order, you know. You brought up a little storyline like that for, for Fight for the Fallen, but uh, but it shouldn't be Hangman at all. But uh, I love this segment. I thought it was just, it was just beautiful. This the, the attention the, the attention to detail with like the, the face off with Hangman and Omega was just was just beautiful, man. I mean, I'm telling you, when these guys eventually like start throwing hands at each other, man, it's going to be a huge, huge pop from the crowd, man. And I just I can't wait for this eventual matchup for the world title. Um, I just thought about this in my head. Uh, looking for something down there, but uh, um, you know, I just thought about this in my head uh, while you were talking about that segment. Um, would it hurt if Pac took another loss to Kenny Omega, you think? I don't know. We haven't seen Pac in a little while. I think I've heard he, he went back to England for a little bit, but uh, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. Uh, may I mean, maybe, just maybe, you could give Orange Cassidy a one, his one-on-one match with Omega Kid since that never happened because Orange Cassidy was in a triple threat at double or nothing, so maybe, just maybe, uh, Cassidy could get a one-on-one. I don't know if he's in the top five right now. He's uh, number two. He's number two. Okay, maybe maybe you could do. I mean, Cassidy and Sattler got the win tonight in their mixed tag. Maybe you could do Kurt Cassidy and Omega for five fall, and that'd be a great ticket seller right there. Um, but I, you have a, a few options right there. But um, hopefully they don't decide on page. It's way too early. I I I feel like knowing AEW, they're gonna be, be smart about it and pull the trigger it all out, which is the absolute right place to do it. Yeah, oh, if you uh, Omega versus Page at Fight for the Fallen sounds stupid. Like you don't want to, you don't want to blow it off on Fight for the Fallen on a television show. And if that if that's the case, which I hope it's not, Hangman Page is not winning the title at Fight for the Fallen. So, uh, well, we're just gonna have to see, man. But um, you know, I'm excited, very excited for this feud. The crowd is so into it, man. You, 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 once, like I said, you got to love it, man. But uh, we got uh, another Pinnacle Inner Circle match this week. We got a six-man with FTR and Wardlow versus um, Santana, Ortiz, and Jake Hager. This is a, a kind of a common trend for me uh, of the night. Uh, we previously just got done that great segment, so it made me kind of not care about this match that much the match was fine but i really didn't care about it the pinnacle got the win after um um what's the name ftr yeah dax harwood i think gave jake hager a low blow and then they hit the big rig on hager woodlow got the cover and he got the and uh, F- the pinnacle defeated the inner circle tonight in this six-man tag and then after the match, uh, Co- uh, Conan's knee got taken out by Tully Blanchard. So that gets more heat on FTR. Leading up to their tag team match against Santana and Ortiz, which I, I would have to imagine is going to happen in the next couple of weeks, man. I, I, at, this point, I, at this point, I'm just waiting for that match to happen. I really am. I, I want to see that match so bad. It's going to be a top tag team match of the entire year, I think. Could be. I'm not sure. But as for the sixth man, I didn't really care about it that much. Pinnacle got the win over the inner circle tonight. Yeah, I thought this was a, a fun six-man tag. Uh, I thought, you know, they all uh, six men did very well in the ring. Uh, FTR uh, getting the pin uh, over Jake Hager, that was the right call to do. I figured the Pinnacle was going to win this matchup. But, yeah, eventually – we're gonna get uh, FTR uh, versus uh, Proud and Powerful, which yeah, I can't. I have to imagine it's gonna happen at one of these July shows this month. Uh, so yeah, like you said, Joseph, I'm really just ready for that tag match to happen already, man. Because I mean, we're bound to get just an absolute banger with these two teams. I mean, they're undoubtedly this will go down as one of the best tag team matches of the year. I can already tell you that, man. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty much just waiting on uh, this eventual tag match to happen. And uh, but. Uh, regardless, this was a pretty fun six-man tag, and uh, the pinnacle, uh, the winners tonight, which was the right call. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, next segment, we had the face-to-face, MJF and Chris Jericho. Now, listen, <laughs> listen for those, uh, for, listen for for those people watching out there. Um, I've seen this a bunch of times in my life. Whether it was a wrestling show or a sporting event, 
I previously saw one in May at, at a Phillies game twice. If you are going to a sporting event or a wrestling show, do not be an asshole. Do not be an idiot and jump the barricade and try to get in the ring or run on the field. Some fat slob, uh, fat fat bastard that <laughs> that uh, Jericho called the sky um, tried to get in the ring and attack MJF, and you see Jericho saving MJF. Wow. I guess Chris Jericho likes the pinnacle after all. But he said, he said, I should have let that fat bastard come in and kick your ass. That was funny. But lesson to be told, do not, do not, uh, do not do that stuff at sporting events. It's really stupid. Uh, so, yeah, the floor is yours. I'm going to let you take it away with this segment. Yeah, uh, yeah, completely agree, Joseph. Yeah, um, people... If, yeah, if you're going to a sporting event or just any event in general with, with a lot of people around, stop! Don't be an idiot. Please, just do not be an idiot. Like, you are there to enjoy a show that the the AW is willingly giving you, and the fact that somebody, some idiot in the crowd, wants to jump and and try and get involved with the wrestlers. I mean, you got to be the dumbest person alive to do stuff like that, man. I mean, I mean. I, I think Jericho and MJF played it off very professionally. They played they played it off like true professionals, uh, and I love the fact that they added it into the the face to face segment. I thought that was a really cool touch. There It was a very like kind of last minute thing, of course, but I thought that was a uh, that was really good. But uh, yeah, people just don't be stupid, please. Just don't be stupid. I mean, it's amazing how many people want to get their little fifteen seconds of fame there, and then they end up uh, they end up uh, regretting it in the end. So, but yeah, there was that. But. Uh, yeah, this face to face though overall loved it. Another fantastic segment tonight. The man, you know, when Jericho the the line Jericho <laughs> came out with, uh, and he was telling him, to, "You give me any stipulation?" Yeah, I, I, think, I don't know what the other the previous two were before he said the big one at the end, but I'm just gonna go over the big line. And I was drinking my Gatorade when he said it, so he he almost made me choke on my Gatorade when he said it. So uh, I'll just get right to it. Uh, Jericho told MJF specifically, I'll even have sex with your mother. <laughs> and then, and then just a little pause, and then again. <laughs> and then, I mean, just uh, Chris Jericho's the man. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, Chris Jericho is by far one of the best ever to do it on the mic. I mean, I think we've all established that, man. That was such, that was probably maybe my favorite part of this segment. But I mean, the whole entire segment was tremendous. But uh, MJF gave uh, Jericho his, uh, his uh, stipulations. He, he referred back to Greek mythology with Hercules uh, as part of this uh, the stipulation. So he's going to go through a series of obstacles, uh, and I, I'm guessing it's going to range for about over a month or so. Uh, he's going to do four uh, obstacles, and then the, the fifth little obstacle will be his uh, his match, or if M- as MJF likes to call it, the MJF rub uh, that he will give to Chris Jericho in that fifth stipulation. I, I'm I'm a big fan of this. I really like this. I think this will be a lot of fun. Uh, we've already seen this kind of happen with MJF back during his feud with Cody Rose and how great that was. I loved every bit of what they did to build that match up. And then we got the eventual match uh, at Revolution uh, back in 2020. But uh, here we have kind of the same thing happening here with Chris Jericho. I'm, I'm really interested to see how creative AEW gets with these stipulations. I think it's going to be a recipe for success. man. A- anything with Jericho and MJF involved, it's it's going to be a recipe for success for sure. But uh, excellent face-to-face, man. Another fantastic segment tonight. Now these four, ma- he he's got four matches, I believe so. I it, he said it was I think it's similar to what Moxley did in the feud with Jericho, where Moxley faced each member of the inner circle. So it might be Jericho versus each member of the Pinnacle. I'm I'm not totally sure, but we'll have to see. But it kind of sounded like that's what they were referring to. And he said there's a stipulation for each match. So, you know, I, I'm interested. It, it, this is going to get Chris Jericho really over, I think. It's going to get more sympathy for him to want to see him kick the uh, uh, kick MJF's ass. And this is probably going to lead to a match at All Out between MJF and Chris Jericho. And, you know, Jericho said, maybe if I can't get by your, your obstacles and I can't beat you, maybe I don't deserve to be in AEW. So is that a tease? That Jericho is going to take a break after All Out. Maybe, maybe just maybe. I, I think uh, 
you know, putting MJF over in the feud, it, it might be a little too early to call just him. I, I feel like ultimately, you know, you putting MJF over is the right move. I mean, you're you're the veteran putting over the young talent. We we've seen this, you know, countlessly uh, in AEW already. Uh, but uh, I think that might have been just a little bit of a tease that Jericho uh, might be going away for a bit. Uh, he is touring with Fozzie again, so he he just might be uh, taking that uh that break from AEW, and we might not see him on our screens for the for the foreseeable future uh, after all, but we'll have to see. But uh, I'm very much interested in this uh, this uh, feud and then the eventual match we'll get between MJF and Jericho, which should happen at All Out. Uh, it's it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. Do you think his matches are going to be against the four Pinnacle members? I think that's kind of lame. you got to come up with something uh, other. I don't know. I think they're going to get MJF, creative with this. MJF is the kind of, uh, MJF is the kind of prick. That is gonna throw out the, the like the biggest monster. Like, what if MJF throws out Miro against Chris Jericho? I don't see that happening because Miro cannot lose right now. But I'm just saying. Yeah, I don't know. We'll we'll have to see. Um, I I think they're gonna get creative with it. I, I feel like when you we have two minds, especially with Jericho and MJF, I feel like they're gonna put their brain power together and really come up with something uh, that the fans will uh, be a fan of at the end of the day. But yeah, I agree. This, the, the, I love the stipulation. It's it's gonna. I could see AEW getting very creative with it. The crowd was allowed during this segment. Who's your daddy? Chance the MJF. MJF shitting on Miami. Great stuff, man. Loved it. MJF getting back in crowds. Uh, really quick before we move on to uh, Andrade and Matt Seidel. Did you see the clip on social media last week? You know the. You know the the. One of the, the big tall guy who's at the NXT shows all the time. And he's 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 standing on the front row. Big guy, glasses. Oh yeah, I know I know who you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, did you did you see um, uh, MJF after the Sam Guevara match? Wardlow was helping him. The guy was yelling at MJF, and MJF yelled at him, "Blow me, you fat turd." <laughs> I actually didn't see that clip, but uh, I'm happy that happened, man. That guy, let me tell you, so, I mean, the guy might be, he might be a nice guy, I don't know, but man, the way he comes off on TV, like even if, whether it's NXT or AW, the guy comes off as a total geek. I mean, like my God, this guy's always like blurting something out. He's always just like just going crazy on screen, and it's like, I mean, I, I mean, the energy is definitely there, but it's like, man, I mean, don't even try with MJF. Just don't, don't even try, man. Just, just like, just take the insult move on and we it's just man i love that though man classic mjf i mean mjf with fans it's it's, it's one of the most beautiful things to see that's a guy who, who needs to be in front of a full crowd of fans and you can tell the the heat is still very much there with mjf <laughs> yeah I, I had to bring that up because yeah. of how it was but uh yeah man and mjf I'm, I'm excited to see what what he's gonna do with these with the crowd you know uh what, what it's just he, he gets heat so easily, and pe- people hate him so easily. It, it's a great thing to see. So, I'll we'll have to see what happens with this whole Chris Jericho thing and MJF. But we are going to move on to uh, Matt Seidel versus Andrade El Idolo, who he came out with a full suit on. He had a black mask, and he got a, he got pyro, so good for him. And what was he? Was he wrestling in jeans? Uh, it looks like they, I don't know. They weren't really jeans. They were like striped pants. They almost looked like um, kind of like what the New York Yankees wear for like, like baseball pants, you know. But it was like slacks. Think, yeah. Yeah, I think someone said that he's wrestling in slacks. So, um, not really sure how to feel about the gear, but the entrance, the mask was he. he that the mask is a very nice touch. He, he it makes him look like. A big deal. Um, this match, I'm not going to go over it move by move. This match was good. Uh, I expect, I, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I thought it was a good match. Not saying it was bad. But I, I kind of expected more out of this match, considering who was in it with Andrade and Matt Seidel. I think one of the problems with the match was the crowd was not really into it, besides a couple spots. Um, like, it, it, it could... It could be because of uh, who he was wrestling. You know, Matt Seidel. Um, 
Matt si- I, I don't really know if a lot of people care about Matt Seidel, but he tried to get the crowd hyped about twice, and neither time worked out. So it could have been the opponent Andrade was working with, but they had a good match. Andrade won with the uh, hammerlock DDT, and then at the end of the match, he goes after Matt Seidel's arm. We are still waiting for Andrade's surprise. We are still waiting for that. So um, we're just going to have to wait and see what his surprise is. I'm I'm guessing it's going to happen on one of these July shows. I think it has to. Um, But, man, what did you think of the debut of Andrade El Idolo against Matt Seidel? Yeah, I thought the the match was very solid. Uh, yeah, I understand what you mean, Joseph. You thought he was gonna, he was gonna have a little bit more. Uh, I, I think it just kind of what happened was the crowd probably wasn't super into it. Uh, I feel like they were kind of into Andrade a little bit. I, I heard uh, some good pops for Andrade throughout the match, but I think for Matt Seidel, not, I don't think a lot of people really care that much. Which it, it sucks because Matt Seidel is a great, great wrestler, and I think he's got he's he's got a good character, and he's you know he plays a, the babyface role really well, but. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, but I, I didn't think it fell flat or anything. I thought it was still a solid debut for Andrade. Andrade looked great. I mean, the the his look, his physique looks phenomenal. Uh, you could tell he's just he's very excited to just be back in the ring and just to be somewhere where he can truly show his talents and truly truly show off. You know what WWE was really missing out on with him, and so uh, it's really cool just to see him in AEW, man. And I can't wait to see him tie it up with more of the talent in AEW. Oh my God! Listen. Um... Him being in AEW, I mean, WWE, this makes the, and we're going to talk about the folks. If, if, if you are watching and you are a WWE stand or a WWE show, you might want to skip a couple minutes of the, of the review because we're going to be bringing it up a lot and stuff that they messed up on. And this is one of them. So if you want to go ahead and skip a couple minutes, I, I will allow you to. But man, doesn't WWE look stupid? Like, look at the look at the look at the presentation Andrade had with the mask. Uh, are you a fan of the suit? Uh, I mean, the suit's all right. I, the mask, I love. I love the mask. That that was that's a great great touch right there. Yeah, um, I just feel like his presentation was really good. I'm very curious to see what surprise he has because I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't know if Vicky Guerrero is going to work. Yeah, you know, she's Latino, he's Latino, so I kind of understand it, but I don't think another reason I think Andrade is not getting the big reaction, and he got the big reaction, is because I don't really know how people feel about Vicky Guerrero with her annoying excuse me voice and all that stuff. Do you think I'm wrong in this? No, I mean, I see what you mean. Uh, it, it's, I think we just got we got so used to seeing Andrade with with uh, Selena Vega. You know, we got so used to that pairing, and it, it worked so well when when that pairing was a thing uh, back in NXT and back in WWE. Um, so seeing him with somebody else like Vicky Guerrero, it is a pretty weird dynamic. I I will I will say this: thing. I'm not too in, fully invested in it. Um, I don't know if it's going to be a long term thing. I mean, of course, we know Vicky's managing Nyla Rose too. Um, and so I, I don't know, uh, this will be a longer term uh, deal, but, uh, hopefully Andrade's surprise will be something, uh, worth our while. I feel like it will. I mean, Tony Khan's promising a lot of big surprises. He revealed one of those big surprises tonight, which we're about to get into. Um, but, uh, we'll, we'll have to see what happens, but yeah, I'm, I'm not too crazy about the whole dynamic with Vicky and Andrade right now, but, uh, I'm hoping the, the whatever the surprise is, it'll be something that will kind of really elevate Andrade more and more. Yeah. Listen. WWE, they are a bunch of idiots for letting go of Andrade. This guy, I I said it when he was on the main roster. Uh, this guy is easily top 10 most talented wrestlers in the entire world. The fact that WWE had him sitting and catering, doing nothing. He was the United States champion, and they did absolutely nothing with him. He dropped the title, and he did absolutely nothing after that. He feuded with the Street Profits. With Angel Garza for the Raw Tag Team Championships. The fact that this guy was not in any big priority plans in WWE when he is easily top 10 most talented in the world. 
and he's in the peak of his career. Folks, Andrade is only 31 years old. Do you you think you think that might be uh, old age, but in professional wrestling, 31 years old is pretty young, I think. And he's got years and years and years under his belt in AEW if he wants to. So, man, this makes WWE look dumb. I hate to, I, I mean, I don't hate to say it because it's true, but this is just over and over again with this company, WWE. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, looking at all the, the cuts that have happened uh, in recent memory, man, I mean, they, they, they are just so dumb for letting all these great, talented people go. And Andrade's in the, on that list, and you, you include Alistair, or, uh, you know, we'll talk about him, uh, the man who, man, we see a little later on. We'll talk about him. He's included in that list, too. But, man, the, the amount of talent uh, that, that was just, you know, let go by WWE, man, I mean, they, they were so foolish for doing it. And they could come up with any stupid excuse they want, whether it was, you know, budget cuts or, or whatever they want to say, whatever John Laurinaitis wants to say on the phone to them or whatever. But, you know, it's like now we can finally see these men and women truly show their full potential uh, somewhere else where they're actually going to be treated with respect, treated with love. And I mean, folks, I mean, you know, it doesn't take a rock science to, you know, figure out, you know, the WWE just simply doesn't care about their talent. They just, they just, they, they had, they pick and choose who they, they, who they want to push. They pick and choose who they want at the very top. You got, you got, you got your Charlotte Flairs, you got your Roman Reigns and Roman Reigns, you know, definitely well-deserved, right? Because he's definitely the, one of the best things going, it's not the best thing going in pro wrestling, but. Uh, you know, I don't watch the you know main roster product. I haven't watched it forever, and I'm very glad I haven't because it, it's clearly you know it's shown to me from what I can sell on social media that WWE has still not changed their ways. They're still crappy as ever, um, and you know it's just I, it's amazing to me how people that this company still has supporters even though the way they run business, the way they treat their their staff and their talent is just absolutely deplorable. You know, it, it really is, uh, and you look at I mean. You, I mean, any re- wrestlers can go to any other company. Well, I mean, I get you may be having the whole dream of wrestling in WWE one day, but if you're a pro wrestler, I don't understand why you would want to go to WWE at this stage. I really don't. Like, if we were talking, like, 10, 15 years ago, I'd understand, you know. But, like, it, I mean, with we got a company like AEW who's around who who is really hitting their stride. And now, especially with fans back, they're really, really hitting that stride once again that we saw before the pandemic. I mean, why would you even want to go to WWE? That, that's my take on it. I know people are going to disagree with me. The WWE stands are going to jump down my throat. But <laughs> quite frankly, I don't give a crap. I'm going to stand by my word at the end of the day. I'm going to be honest and truthful. And whoever doesn't like it, you know, you don't got to listen to me. Go listen to somebody else that will show WWE, that will show Monday Night Raw, show Friday Night SmackDown week after week, telling you the shows are good when they're not. You know, I'm not I'm not sitting here. I'm not going to do that because. Quite frankly, I don't watch the shows. I watch AEW. I watch NXT. That's two products right there that are way better than Monday Night Raw and Friday Night SmackDown. Yeah, if you guys don't like what he just said, I don't know what to tell you. Go watch someone else. Go watch Christian Miracle. I don't care. But uh, yeah, yeah. Watch somebody who will who will tell you everything's good when it's not, and but come here to listen to me and Joseph give you the cold hard facts. And whether it's AEW about WWE, we're going to give you the cold hard facts. We're going to be honest. We're going to be truthful. And I mean, honestly, what? Why wouldn't you want honesty? You know, honesty is is what's best. You know, and you're going to get that from me and Joseph, no doubt about it. Owen Anderson, oh, was standing in the ring with Tony Schiavone. He acknowledged the Miami crowd. Tony Schiavone was like, "Cody got a big win over QT tonight in the strap match." Your son won his debut. Everything is going great for you. He acknowledged the Miami crowd. Says it feels great to be back in front of a full audience. The lights go out. And the lights are out for a couple seconds. And the lights come on. And who is in the ring? And I literally got up from my couch. And I... I don't remember the last time. Maybe Andrade was the last time I actually got up on my couch and marked. But, folks, Tommy End, Aleister Black, Malachi Black, which is his name in AEW, is all elite. I, we didn't get the graphic yet. 
I'm sure when we get the graphic, I will say something on Twitter. But Malachi Black, he is standing in the ring. One side of his face is normal. The other side of his face is all black with his eye black. And his side is black. And he gives Arn Anderson the black mass. And then Cody comes in. And he checks on. And Cody eats the black mess. And man, this Miami crowd, Wesley, was eating this shit up. They were eating it up, man. Holy bleeping shit. <laughs> My goodness. I, 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 I was shocked. I really was shocked. I did not expect to see that happen especially when he was released four weeks ago four weeks ago now before we actually have a long discussion about this i am scrolling through twitter and someone on twitter i don't know if it's reliable or not says that malachi black was able to debut in, in aew so soon because of a a clerical error on WWE's end. I don't know so I don't know what happened. I don't know what that means, but man, you know what I do know is that WWE once again messed up with one of the talents they had. That's that's what I know. And man, I can't imagine. I I I, I can imagine. Uh, Triple H is kicking himself in the ass right now, knowing that he built this guy up in NXT. He was the NXT champion. I loved him in NXT. I loved Aleister Black. And he comes up to the main roster, nothing. Nothing happened. And they released him. And I can't imagine what Triple H is thinking. He is probably kicking himself in the ass right now. Unbelievable. What a holy shit moment that was. Aleister Black is in AEW. This is AEW's game. And this is most certainly WWE's loss. Go ahead. Absolutely. 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 I think by the end of this year, this is going to be a moment. This will go this will go down as one of AEW's biggest moments of the entire year. One of the best debuts in, in recent memory that I can remember, man. Uh, Malachi Black. Not Aleister Black, not Tommy and Malachi Black is all elite. I'm speechless, man. I'm just speechless. That was such an amazing debut. I popped huge, popped huge when the lights came up, and there he was, Malachi Black, standing right there in front of Arn Anderson, delivered the Black Mass, and then another one delivered to Cody Rhodes. And now... It's looked to me like, come all out, we got ourselves a feud involving Cody Rhodes that we can actually care about now. But Cody Rhodes versus Malachi Black, match made in heaven right there, man. And, you know, I heard, I heard a little bit of talk before the show that he, he, he might show up tonight. I he didn't want to read too much into it. I was like, you know what, I, I don't want to get my hopes up too much. But there he was on our television streams tonight on TNT. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And Joseph, like you mentioned, man, AEW's gain and certainly WWE's loss. How this guy was taken in NXT, when he, when he was in NXT, built perfectly. You could not have built this guy any better. He was one of the, the best characters, and, and honestly, in all of WWE, not just NXT, in all of WWE. I mean, you talk about a character that was so well-crafted, so, taking so much care. And then he lands on the main roster, and like you said, Joseph, just absolutely nothing. That I, how you take this guy, how you look at this man, you don't immediately put him into a, a big, huge main title, world title program, boggles my mind to no end. This is one of the best talents, pound for pound, that you will find in the entire world. And WWE, Vince McMahon, and Bruce Pritchard, they didn't see that at all. How they didn't see it, I don't know. But, I mean, these are the same guys who want to push an Eva Marie on their television screens for whatever reason. Uh, but 
regardless, man, we got him here in AEW. I'm so, so happy, man. I, I've loved this man since his days in NXT. He, he was, like I mentioned, one of the best characters by far uh, in, in pro wrestling. And, uh, and I saw the little vignette he posted on his Instagram page earlier before Dynamite came on the air. Got me pumped, man. That was a very, very great run. Yeah, we even seen a little cameo from Josiah Williams, another former WWE uh, talent. Well, I don't know so much talent. He was more of the, uh, a musician in WWE, but he made uh, a little bit of the music for uh, for the NXT superstars. Uh, he had some you know, work for WWE's music, but uh, we saw a little cameo there in that vignette. For those who haven't watched, I highly suggest you go onto uh, Mahalakai Black's Instagram page and you check out that vignette. It's, it's about five minutes long. Very much worth the time. It is so great. It's so well crafted. But man, I don't know what else I can. What more I could say? Malachi Black's in AEW. He's going to enter a program with Cody Rhodes. I mean, what a what a great first program for him. I mean, I don't think you could get a, a better program for him right out of the gates, you know. And so th- this is going to be a lot of fun, man. And that crowd, that pop from Miami tonight, I think goes to show you that, you know, we're we're in for a real treat with Malachi Black and AEW. I have not seen the clip on Instagram yet, so probably later tonight when I'm done this or tomorrow, I will definitely uh, check this out. But, man, I mean, just just think of the stuff he can do with this company. Like you said, this this guy, Malachi Black, is coming into AEW, and he comes into AEW on his first night. And he gave a black mask to Arn Anderson and Cody Rhodes. If this doesn't say that Tony Khan has big plans for this guy, I, I don't know what you got. I don't know what you guys are thinking. Just think of the matches he's going to have in AEW. The opponents for him are endless, just like Andrade, Pentagon. Pack, Kenny Omega, uh, Christian. Can you imagine Darby Allen and Al and, and, and Malachi Black? Oh, that, that's a feud I want to see. Oh, that no, you know we're getting that feud. We're we are definitely getting that. I mean, two characters are are very similar to each other too. You know, two guys who are very dark and brooding. You know, I I, I think uh, we. It's, Knowing both these guys' styles, man, oh my gosh, that that is gonna be what a what a feud, what a match that will be, Ali. That's what I want to see. That's who I want to see him feud with. I want to see him feud with Darby Allen, man. I really do. And you know what I would do with this guy? I, I, you know what I would do? Um, you know, do you really see? Um. Before you get, we'll talk about this, and then we'll move on to the next match, which this certain individual was involved in. Do you see anything good going on for the Butcher and the Blade? Do you, can, can you see them? Uh, do they? Can you see them being good in the Hardy family office? I don't know. Uh, I mean, they certainly have a lot of elements within that group. Uh, they do kind of feel like more so of a mid card faction when you when you really look at it. They don't feel too really main event, but uh, you know I've heard the the you know little murmurs in the community about uh, Butcher and Blade possibly uh, aligning themselves with Malachi Black. Uh, that could be something I could definitely see somewhere down the line. I feel like the, all three of those guys together could be a very very dangerous force. I'm already a big fan of the Butcher and the Blade to begin with. I think they're a great great tag team, very underrated. Um, we could see it somewhere down the line, but I think for right now, at least we're, uh, we're just in for a solo run with, uh, with Malachi Black and, uh, man, I just, I can't wait for it. It's, I mean, his presentation already is just, uh, is just immaculate. It's just, I wouldn't change a thing about it. It's like, this is, this is just so, so good already. And the small detail too that I loved is that his, his, it looks like his freaking eye is beat up and destroyed. I love that, man. I love small attention to detail. His eye is still destroyed from WWE. I love it. Absolutely love it. Tony Khan is going to show Bruce how it's done. I'm telling y'all right now. Wow. Wow, man. Mixed tag. 
Orange Cassidy and Chris Statlander versus the Bunny and the Blade. This was fun. Um, I really didn't care. Like I said, I said this was a common trend for me. I couldn't really care after what we just saw, man. But uh, I tried. I really didn't care. But it was it was fun for what it was. The Blade punches Orange Cassidy in the face without Aubrey Edwards looking. And then he goes for the cover. And she said, Chris Statland is legal. So uh, he looks like a clown, not knowing who the legal man is. Chris Statlander then shoves the bunny into the blade. And we see uh, the last galaxy, I think her finisher name is. I, I don't I don't I don't know. Uh, it's a big bang catastrophe or, yes. or, or a big big bang theory, I think is what I call it. Something like that. Anyway, Chris Statlander and Orange Cassidy won. So it was a fun mixed tag. Yeah, fun fun, ta- uh, fun mixed tag match. Uh Cassie and Sandler, I pretty much knew we we're going to get the win here. Uh, Orange Cassidy is still very much well over uh, with the crowd. Uh, you love to see it. You just, you really do. Uh, Orange Cassidy is just great. Uh, I, I just never change, you know, never change Orange. You're just so great. Um, but yeah, this it was a, it was a good, fun uh, mixed tag match. Uh, did its job. Um, I'm not sure where, where you go with this with, uh, with Orange Cassidy uh, and Chris Statler, but uh, it's good to see him pick up a good win here in a mixed tag team match. Um, I don't know if they're going to continue to feud with the Hardy family office, but time will tell. But uh, for what it was, it was fun. Uh, and, yeah, that's a good good, good match. Mm-hmm. And then next up, uh, very quickly, um, Amanda Nunez, Dan Lambert, and Jorge Masvidal were in the building. Dan Lambert cut a promo. And he was the he was represent, he was representing the WWE stands in the IWC tonight. So he was crapping on AEW, saying this product sucks and everything negative about AEW. And ultimately, he got attacked by Lance Archer. He said before that he said. Um, Something about Dustin Poirier knocking out Conor McGregor again this Saturday night. And um, he gets attacked by Lance Archer. And he gets hit by the blackout. That was it. Maybe this segment's going to get mainstream attention. Who knows? Yeah. uh... Your camera went off, bro. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh... Yeah. Yeah, um, but anyway, uh, as far as the segment goes, yeah, it was a very random segment. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think, um, yeah, uh, sorry about that, man. Somebody's trying to call me on my phone. That's why it was keep messing up. But uh, but anyway, yeah, uh, when it came to the segment, uh, it was very random. I, th- I feel like uh, Dan Lambert was kind of representing, uh, he might have he been representing Jim Cornette in the segment, to be honest with you. <laughs> I feel like that's that. I saw somebody bring that up on Twitter. I was like, you know what? I can kind of see it. Uh, but yeah, he. Uh, it was a very random. Thing, but I, I'm guessing, like you said, Joseph, it probably was to just get mainstream attention on like ESPN or something. Uh, so, but uh, it, it was what it was. It wasn't a terrible segment. I didn't think it like really crapped the bed. I thought honestly, I thought Dan Lambert was not too bad of a promo. You know? Oh no. Uh, yeah. He honestly he he conducted himself very well on the mic. Uh, but uh, Lance Archer comes out. He eats a blackout. Uh, Dan Lambert does, um, but I can't be mad about. Uh, um, I can't be mad about seeing uh, Lance Archer on my television screen because, fun fact, I will be meeting him this Sunday afternoon at a local show here in Memphis. So I will make sure to uh, try to get a picture with him, and I will gladly post that on social media. But that's just a little little bit of a plug there for for myself. But uh, but yeah, I mean, the segment was was what it was. Very random, but. Uh, you know, didn't find it to be terrible. Uh, it, you know, I think it, at the end of it, I think it was just trying to get me mainstream coverage. So, yeah. Next Wednesday is Fighter Fest Night One in Austin, Texas. We got the full card uh, on my phone. We got the um, FTW Championship: Ricky Starks against Brian Cage. That should be a fun match. IWGP. United States Championship, 
the machine gun Carl Anderson versus John Moxley. Man, that that's going to be fun. That's really going to be a, that's a match that's been building up for a long time as well. Because that was planned, I believe that was planned in New Japan a very long time ago. I think. Do you remember? I don't remember. Um, but regardless, we got the uh, IWGB US title on the line next week. I'm uh, very much happy to see Moxley uh, make his return. I'm repping my boy tonight with Mr. John Moxley, so I can't wait to see him back for Fireface Night 1 against Carl Anderson. Should be a very, very fun uh, U.S. title match. Um, but yeah, I, I, man, this partnership with New Japan, it's just awesome to see it uh, continue to, you know, grow more and more, man. I mean, it's, it's only up from here, man. We've already seen Kenta make a special appearance on Dynamite, man. And, you know, we're bound to see even more New Japan talent uh, come in uh, in, the, in the future. And then, uh, you know, it, I think uh, we saw yeah, Yuji U- U- Nagata not too long ago uh, going up against John Moxley for the uh, that same IWGP US title. So, man, it's it's just very cool to see AEW working with all these different companies, Impact, New Japan. I mean, it's just only up from here, man. Absolutely. And then other three matches, Ethan Page, Darby Allin in a coffin match. So there's a big coffin match that's been building up for quite some time now. And that's that's probably the big match next week, to be honest. That coffin match with Ethan Page and Darby Allen, Matt Hardy versus Christian Cage, and Penelope Ford against a returning Yuka Zakazaki. So should be a fun Firefest show next week. Main event for the AEW Tag Team Championships. Uh, street fight, Eddie Kingston and Penta versus the Young Bucks. No more, uh, no more. They don't have facial hair on their face anymore. Well, I'm kind of, I'm kind of glad you didn't listen to me now because if you looked like Matt Jackson tonight, and he came out with no facial hair. I'm like, you're like, God damn it! I did this for no. I got reason. worked. I got worked. If that were to. <laughs> But, uh, man, uh, yeah, no facial hair, Young Bucks. You know, it's a RIP, RIP to the facial hair, man. But uh, I think it was for the best anyway. It wasn't really all that good of a look. Uh, but regard- they, they still came out looking like buffoons. But that's what they do because they're heels, and I love it. I love that the fact that they, they just come out with a new look every single week, and it's just an abomination in wardrobe history. But, uh, but yeah, uh, we got the main event, Street Fight for the AEW Tag Team Tiles. Very, very, very fun and wild main event. Uh, a lot of great action, man. A lot of great spots. Uh, I expected no less from these two teams. Uh, it, it definitely uh, got the crowd uh, pop, popping pretty good by the end of it. Uh, it's really hard to go over all the spots. Uh, the, one, the ones that really stuck out to me, the first is that big Canadian destroyer off the apron through the table um, for, uh, yeah, for um, Pentagon to Matt Jackson. That was such a beautiful, beautiful spot there. And then, uh, you know, of course, we got the thumbtacks coming out at the end. And then uh, we saw the little uh, Hurricane Rana off the top rope from Nick Jackson on the Pentagon onto the tacks. It's just, you know, lo- you love to see it in street fights, man. But, yeah, for what it was, it was a very, very fun, wild, awesome match. And, um, and it really, I think it sent the Miami crowd home happy tonight. Uh, throwing thumbtacks at Penta. They put oh, yeah. Th- they put thumbtacks in Eddie Kingston's mouth to end the show with a super kick. That was that was something. I would never take that spot in my in my life. I would never put I would never willingly put thumbtacks in my mouth. Like like sure, go ahead, you know. I'd never do that. Never. But man, this was such a fun tag team match. The good brothers came out. Frankie Kazarian came out. You know what I love, dude? You know what had me cracking up? What was, was it? I, was that? What was it? What, what got you pumped up tonight? Ah, so they were doing. They were pretending to do the, the spot again. Um, was last week with Brandon Cutler on the apron. I was Matt Jackson, and Cutler's like, "No, no, I'm not gonna do it." Then, cause then Matt Jackson reversed it, and then Penta reversed it, and then all of a sudden. Cutler's standing there chill. He's just got his, his, his cold pepper spray. Frankie Kazarian comes and picks him up. This guy's freaking out. And he starts spraying the cold spray in the air. And he's standing right in front of the fans. 
And he is. Did you see him spray one of the fans? It, it did it. Did like, he? I, I didn't actually see that. I knew he was spraying like a like a maniac, but I didn't know he got the fan, one of the fans. That's awesome. <laughs> He it, it, that the fan wasn't affected, it seemed like. But I love like the uh, the obnoxiousness from Cutler. He got power bombed through a table while spraying the cold spray. That's what got me laughing. I thought that spot was awesome. The Frankie Kazarian got taken out by the Good Brothers, of course, and the Young Bucks retained the tag team titles over Eddie Kingston and Penta. Part of me wanted to see Ray Phoenix and Penta versus the Young Bucks. But um, I don't know. Does Fred Phoenix come back and the Lucha Bros feud with the Young Bucks for the tag team championships? I don't know. We we might can see it. I, I eventually, personally, I see the Young Bucks eventually dropping those titles to Santana Ortiz when when the time comes and that time might come it all out. Come September, we'll have to see. But uh, that's who I who that's who I have as the ideal opponents to uh, take the titles off the Young Bucks. But uh, I would love to see another Lucha Brothers Young Bucks match in the future. Absolutely. I would love to see that as well. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the sad part of the review. You know why? Because it's over. This is this is your officially your Road Rage review here on the channel. Thank you all for watching the review. If you have not already, like I said, be sure to subscribe to the channel. You're gonna you, you don't want to miss some great content in July. Next week we got next week we got five you, next week. We got Fighter Fest. You don't want to miss me and Wesley Williams talk about Fighter Fest, especially with the loaded card next week. Three big matches: Ricky Starks, Brian Cage, Carl Anderson, John Moxley, and then the coffin match. So you're gonna want to you're gonna want to tune into next week's review, man. So be sure to subscribe to the channel, turn on the bell, all that stuff. Comment down below your thoughts about tonight's Road Rager show, the fans. Man, it just feels so good uh, that AEW's in their pre-pandemic vibe right now. Hit the like button if you like what myself and Wesley Williams had to say in tonight's review. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Conlon underscore Joseph. My man, where can they follow you on your socials? Uh, you already know. You can follow me, your boy, on Twitter at Big underscore Wes 18. That is B-I-G underscore W-E-S-1-8. I tweet about NXT every Tuesday. I tweet about AEW Dynamite, of course, every Wednesday night. You can find me on there talking about all that. And I'm trying to get back and talking about AEW Elevation again on Mondays. I've been kind of slacking on it. I've just been kind of finding myself busy on Monday evenings. But when the time does come for me to tweet about uh, Elevation Live as it's happening, I will let you guys know that. Just make sure you follow me on Twitter. Of course, follow Joseph on Twitter as well. Come support us right here on Big Five Feel as we give you the best play-by-play -play analysis, the best reviews, the entire IWC covering AEW Dynamite every single Wednesday night. The fans are back. The Welcome Back Tour has commenced. Next week, we land in Austin for night one of Fighter Effects. Folks, do not miss out. We will be right back here on Big Favilla to talk about all the action, man. What a great, great start to have the fans back here, man. And it's only going to go up from here, man. I love it. AEW's got me so pumped up, man. I'm just ready for next Wednesday to just get here so we can talk about night one of Fighter Fest. we got a big show. I can't wait to talk about it. Before we go... I got a positive thing coming out of Elevation. Speaking of Elevation, before we go, I got one positive thing about it. Was that Fuego Del Sol had a match. So, and he, and he, he got his first win as well. So, congratulations to Fuego Del Sol. So, we will see you guys next Wednesday night for Fighter Fest Night 1. And I will see you Friday night for the SmackDown review here on the Big Fight Field channel. So, have a good night. Stay safe. As always, stay classy, man.